Hello there, it's Sandy Alnock, and I am here with the final Create in Color segment. Yes, I said final. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But first, let's get to the stamp set I'll be coloring, and it's the skunks. I am actually going to use the skunks, and I'm going to turn one of them into a chipmunk, because when I saw the stamp set, without reading the word on it and knowing what the name of the stamp set was, I thought that last one was a chipmunk. And I really got excited about coloring a chipmunk. So I'm going to do two versions of a skunk and one version of a chipmunk for you. So you can then go and transform the stamp yourself as well. I did a bunch of research on skunks because I wanted to figure out for once and for all, which part is the black part, which part is the white part. And I found a lot of skunks that have black in the eye section, like a lot of them. So we have to figure out how to make black eyes in a black area. And then there's different types of white stripes. Sometimes there's two stripes. Sometimes there's one. Sometimes it's simple. Sometimes it's complex. They're very fuzzy. And the tail sometimes have two stripes. The back sometimes has two, sometimes has one. You can make them any way you want, and I think you'd be right. So I'm going to go with the stamp lines on this first one. And I'm going to try to make the face black but in order to make the eye still visible in a black face, you need to make the color itself more of a gray color. So I'm using a C5 for my light, a C7 for the midtone, and black for the dark. Now, what I'm doing here is putting my shadows in the whites, and you can see that they're the same length as the black shadow in the black sections. And you'll see me do this a little differently in skunk number two. But basically, that's how you gauge how much shading there should be. If there's shading across three quarters of the tail in the black section, there should be shading in the white across three quarters of the white. It's just going to be in a different tone. So I'm, I've got all the black parts kind of blended. I'm going to blend the C2. That was a C4 and a C2 in the white areas to blend that. And then I put a little pink into the cheek because that's one thing I like about Little cute critters is putting some pink in the cheeks. It got really bright. I'll fix that in just a minute. And the flower, I'm going to use one of my favorite combinations, which is a Y08, a V04 for the shadow, and then a Y17 for the interim color. And then I'm just going to use a straight up YG17 for the green and just not even bother to shade it because when you get everything else right, it doesn't really matter if you end up trying to shade every part of it. You can keep the focus on the main thing and be just fine without having to make everything look like it's shaded in detail. So I got out my white pen to add a lot more fuzziness because a lot of the skunks that I saw were just super fuzzy. They had this like frayed, frizzy, crazy wild hair. And maybe that's only when they're spraying that they get all crazy, I don't know, but they looked very fuzzy. So I thought, Maybe I'd add some more fuzz with a white pen so you can, you know, run around the entire thing and just put fuzz everywhere. This started feeling though like a very white skunk. So I, I think that the breed that's drawn here is a different breed because it just felt like it was a very, very white type of skunk. To darken that cheek, I just took a little swipe of the mid-tone color to go over it because that pink was just too garish and dimmed that down a little bit. Now on this one, I'm going to change it because I found a skunk that I thought was perfectly cute and it was much simpler. It had one stripe on the head and it didn't have white around the eyes necessarily, but I wanted some white so that eye would stand out and I could make a pink cheek. So I wanted to see if this would work, if it would still look like a skunk. I'm also simplifying the stripes on the back and the simplifying the stripes on the tail. So instead of having multiple stripes, I'm just going to make them one stripe. It just means that the shading has to be dark enough to cover the fact that there was other lines there that are now disappearing. So I'm using my black shading very generously so that none of that shows, that there's no, no black line that comes back out of it. So again, I'm using the same colors. A C5 for the light and a 100 for the black, and then the midtone is a C7. And I'll get all those blended, and I'm already much happier with this because it feels much simpler. There's a lot less stripes to deal with and that sort of thing. So it's it's 
coming out the way my brain thinks that a skunk should look, even if the white is technically not around the eye. Now, Pepe Le Pew has white around the eyes. Just so you know, I did check. So <laughs> there are there must be skunks that have white around the eyes. And the shading for the white portion, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just doing it at the end rather than early on. And you can see I'm using the C4 and the C2 again to create a nice gradation in the white portion. And then I can drop a tiny bit of pink into that lighter face and it works just perfectly. Did the flower and the stem the very same way. Now, to get to the chipmunk, this gets crazy. Okay, I'm just gonna warn you right now. Pulled up a picture of a chipmunk so you could see the one adaptation I really needed to start with was the eye because they have a nice big round eye and then there's a point on the back and a point on the front. And that's gonna join to the stripes. And then I have to start figuring out the stripes. So I took a yellow and I started making just some general areas so that I could leave the whites white and start to figure out where the color was gonna go. And putting in a color like this just helps me to get my mind wrapped around which portions are gonna be light and which ones are gonna be the kind of super white color versus then I'm gonna start going in with some warm grays to start to tone this down so it looks more realistic. And I just started working in with a bunch of different warm grays throughout all of this. And I don't even know all the colors, there were a gajillion in here, but I thought you might like to see this anyway. The warm gray started toning everything down and softening it. And then I started going back in and adding in colors so that I could put some darkness around each of those white stripes because there's a dark on the top and bottom of most of them. And I started trying to make that yellowish color area, started going in with more reddish kind of browns just to start whooshing all the color together and start to make them look more like a chipmunk. So while I finished coloring this, I thought I'd tell you why this is the final create in color. And it's because I am retiring from being a guest designer for MFT, not for any bad reasons whatsoever. I'm trying to make space for more people because there's so many great colorists out there. I feel like I'm hogging spaces. So I want to leave some, some room and some air for other people as well as I wanna focus more of my time on my teaching. And that's teaching both in my classes as well as on social media because I've been discovering some things lately about the way that I can teach and get more really cool concepts across to people who want to do different things with their art, but I wanna break them down in ways that people can understand better. And I need more time to do that. You would think that doing things more simply would be quicker than doing complex things, but it really isn't. So I'm going to be stepping aside from this de design gig. And I have to say, I have had so much fun playing with the MFT stamps. And I'm gonna continue playing with them. This is not the end of me coloring with MFT, but I'm just gonna not be doing this here on their channel on a monthly basis. And I just wanna say a huge thank you to Kim and Jody and Erica and Stephanie and everybody who I have worked with over there who's been so fantastic, great bunch of people. And I hope you continue to support them because they're a wonderful company. And I will be doing lots of other things. So I invite you to follow me on social media. And especially in January, I'm gonna be compiling on my blog all of, if I can find them all, all of my MFT projects I've ever done in one giant post. So you can find them all. They're all going to be there together, joined in happy, uh, in happy posts. So that it's like all of it together. So stay tuned for that. And I will announce that on my social media. All right, back to El Chipmunk. Isn't he cute? He's just coming out so cute. I did go over some of the white pen with some Copic marker. Just wait till it's dry before you do that and scribble it off if you get any of the white pen on the nib of your marker. I did use a little darker color on the flower this time since I've got so many rich dark colors and more realistic colors in the chipmunk. And that was a V17 that I used for the darker shadow in the flowers. And you'll see all three of them compared here. So that first skunk that I did that was mostly white. The second one, that's more of the Pepe Le Pew kind of colors and the chipmunk. 
So the cards came out really cute. I did them really simply. All I did was throw in some airbrushing in the background and I did just grasses and random stuff. I'm practicing with my airbrush. One day I'm going to get good at this, but I just was playing around with it to finish off my cards. That's about it for me. Thank you, sayonara, from me here at MFT doing my Create and Color segments. I hope to see you elsewhere online. Have a Merry Christmas, and I'll see you on the Instagrams. Bye, guys.